Okay, welcome. My name is Diane. This is Benji. Just kidding. This is Eli, my elephant. Uh, I don't have a pet, so we use Eli instead. This um, brief video is going to be Yoga for Osteoporosis, the 12 poses based on Dr. Lauren Fishman's second series. And you can find more at sciatica.org. It is intended to be kind of like your yoga hit workout, so it's not going to have a lot of the uh, slow, juicy breathing. Maybe not even Shavasana at the end, but it's to encourage you to get your yoga poses done four to five times a week. So this is good for anybody. If you don't have osteopenia or osteoporosis yet, it's still a great thing to do. It can be preventative. So I actually have a timer here, and I'm going to set the timer. And what we're going to do is 30, uh, 30 seconds in a pose, 10 seconds to transition to the next one. So that could be maybe about five breaths for you if you don't want to use the timer. We're going to do the five standing poses, and then the seated twist, and then locust pose, and uh, the leg stretch series. So I'm going to go ahead and start my timer. Ten seconds to get into tree pose. Start on whichever leg you like. Doesn't matter where the foot is on the standing leg. Just as long as you're all on one, balancing on one foot. So breathe. Looking at my timers, making me lose my balance. So keep that drishti. It's okay if you fall out, just get back in. Every day is different. And that was about 30 seconds. I moved my timer back in front of me. So 10 seconds to get to the other side. Here we go. Back to your breath. Deep, easy breaths. Remember, this is all based on Wolf's Law. It's getting everything on the same plane, so you want to feel like flat Stanley. Lift up into the leg. Push the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot. And that's about 30 seconds. So, 10 seconds to transition into Warrior Two. All right, heel to arch alignment. Again, you want to feel kind of like flat Stanley. So here we go. So you want to think about pushing this bent knee towards the back side of your body, rotating this thigh bone inward, shoulder stack right over the hips, feet spread wide, maybe think about pushing your feet away from one another and see how that pulls on the bones. And that was 30 seconds. So we're gonna to transition to triangle pose. Just straighten that front leg, soften your knees so you can tilt your pelvis. Now you wanna think about your spine being one long line. Here we go. Doesn't matter where your top arm is. You wanna lean back into it a little bit, pulling that rib cage down towards the thigh. So try to keep the curve out of your spine. Doesn't matter where your focus is so much. Be here for a few more seconds. One more breath. Good, then we're gonna transition back into extended side angle. All right, so dropping your tailbone, sweeping your arm around again. I'm gonna lean back, take your rib cage back, and start your easy deep breaths. And try and keep the curve out of your spine, nice and long. You could put your hand on a block. You could tuck your top arm behind you. Nice. So go ahead and straighten that leg. Turn all 10 toes forward, slowly, gently transitioning to warrior two on the second side. I'm actually gonna turn sideways so I can show you. Here we go. What I mean by flat stand, you can see my natural intention is, uh, is to kind of tilt my pelvis forward, come out a little bit and see if you can drop your tailbone, lift your low belly. 
Uh, but we're going to see them. And we have to work pretty hard, like on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the hardest. You're working at like an 8 level at least. Let's be here for 10 more seconds. All right, so anything more than 12 seconds is good. After about two minutes, it doesn't make much difference. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and straighten that front leg. For triangle pose, take your rib cage toward your thigh. Try and lean back a little bit, All right? Nice, firm legs. And breathe. It's easy to lose track. You could count. You could count your breaths. Nice. So then we soften into extended side angle. Take that knee right over the middle of the toes. Sweep your arm around. Try and keep your spine, your thighs, and your pelvis all in one long line. good thing about yoga is it's free. It has no side effects. It doesn't require a prescription. You can do it all by yourself. One more deep breath. Nice. Now slowly and gently transition out of that. Heel toe your way in. Getting ready for revolve triangle. So take one step forward and one step back. We're going to take a little bit longer to transition here, right? So your toes are pointed diagonally outward, front leg straight, get tall, fold over your front leg, and then rotate from the waist. So you can have your hand on your thigh or your shin, just don't push into the knee. You could have your hand on a block. You could take your other arm straight out off the back, but don't do this. Keep your arm on the back. Couple more deep breaths. Pull that front hip back, back hip forward. Come out of it safely, soften the front knee. Switch sides, right? Get there safely, take your time, a little more time if you need, and pour in. So you really can get this done in about 12 minutes, 15 minutes. One more deep breath. So those are your 10 standing, or your five standing poses. I want 10, 10, five on each side. I'm safely bringing myself straight down to the floor. Gonna take a little bit longer to transition. And we're going to do our seated poses. I'm gonna come back against the wall, right? So I'm gonna cross the leg closest to the wall over. If it's safe, you've got hip replacement. Might be safer to keep it tucked in by the inner thigh. So this first one, I'm gonna use the wall. And get really, really tall. And then you're gonna take your hands to the wall and feel like you're dragging your arms down. Here we go. Deep breaths. Sit up tall. If it's hard for you to get your pelvis upright, you can sit on a block. Couple breaths. You might be starting to get this a little bit aerobic too. One more deep breath. And I can work my way around to the other side, keeping the same cross. If it's okay to tuck that foot by your heel, get really, really tall, and twist toward that top leg again. So second twist, same side. You're doing great. Remember the important thing is to do these consistently. Work hard at it. 
will pay off. One more deep breath. Nice, then we're gonna transition to the other side. So I'm gonna turn myself all the way around to the wall. Stretch the other leg out. Cross my foot over, right? So foot closest to the wall. And here we go. Feel like you're dragging your arms down, lifting your chest up. And even that extended leg working, right? Toes pointing toward the ceiling. About 10 more seconds. Sit up tall and let that go. And then you can just transition to your second twist. Do it safely, right? Transitions are the dangerous part. Drop your hips, get really tall and find your second twist. You could even close your eyes here. Just twisting the spine like a course through the shoulders, stay level. One thing that's good to do is maybe grab a mirror. If you can practice in front of a mirror now and then, check your alignment. You can let that bottom hip relax. And pull the hip of the top leg back. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Nice. Let that go, and we're gonna safely transition onto our belly for locust pose. You probably know several, several variations. I'm going to do heels up, fingertips pointed toward the heels. So raise up, and here we go. Reach your toes out long. Take the crown of the head forward. You can just gaze at your mat. Still easy breathing. One more deep breath. Let that go, take one arm forward and transition yourself onto your back. Maybe have your strap handy. Plant your feet. Maybe you can feel your heels close to your fingertips. Take a few more seconds to get set. Root your big toes, tuck your shoulder blades together and inhale, lift your hips up. So you could stay here you can interlace your hands underneath you. Relax your jaw. Think about taking your sternum toward your nose. And be here for 10 more seconds. Now the beauty of this, let that go, is that you don't even have to do all these poses at one time. You do the standing poses in the morning, stretch your one leg out, or use our strap. You could do the rest of the poses in the afternoon. So the goal here is to push the foot into the strap, keep your arms straight, and then pull your leg down into the hip. Here we go. So this is different than stretching the hamstring. You want to traction that femur bone into the hip socket. Deep breaths. Nice, then put your, uh, hold the strap in the same hand as the leg is in the air. Put your other hand on your thigh to keep you from rolling off the mat. Keep the opposite side glued to the mat. Try not to cheat by letting the bottom leg go out to the side is a counterbalance. You could take your arms straight out to the side if you need. Pull, pull, pull. Nice, then pull the low belly and bring the leg back up. Draw your knees into your chest and we'll switch to the other leg. Tractioning the femur bone into the hip joint, softening the shoulders. Keep your effort in.
Nine more seconds. You're doing great. One last pose. Take that leg out to the side. Keep the opposite side of the body firm. Pull that leg into the hip socket. Again, see if you can relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. It's all about the femur, the pelvis, the spine. Deep breaths. Nice, then come on back up. Bring that leg out of the strap. Lay it down. Take a moment to check in with your body. Bend your knees if you need. Take a breath. Give yourself that mental pat on the back for showing up. You're doing the good work to keep your bones strong. You can stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Or safely transition to seated. So you can do this. Just keep at it. Find your routine and get it done. The spirit in me honors the spirit in you. Namaste.